Damn, Q. Baby, you did that. What up, what up, what up, man? It's your boy, Shy. Shy vs. Everybody Podcast. Voice of Detroit. Motherfucking podcast MVP in this motherfucker, man. The champ is here! Boy, Shaw, Shaw vs. A Bite Podcast, episode 164. Got special guests in the building. She wear a couple hats too. She a, uh, she a dancer. I've seen you get your dance on, John. <laughs> I'm a part time dancer. Yeah, she a hooper. You know I see you was a hooper and John producer. You got DJ uh, Cali Crazy, right? Yep. All right, and, and, but some people might know you by Fresh Dior. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah, back, back in the day, day. throwback. Oh, your, your name was Duke. Yeah. How you get the, how you get that? Like talk about that. Duke and Fresh Dior. Like I know that's back in your um, young days. Yeah. So <laughs> Duke came from my pops. Okay. And Duke really came from Duke's a hazard. Yeah. And uh it was I don't know, it was something with them watching that movie and the driving and they was driving crazy too. So I guess they started calling her Duke mm -hmm. to my grandma. Mm -hmm. And I was born looking just like her. Like yeah, when I sure. came out I looked identical to my grandma so yeah. he been calling me duke but uh, some of the other grandkids get called duke too yeah yeah yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Uh, one of my younger cousins and one of my older cousins nicknamed duke too but i got it tatted because mm -hmm. that's all my pops used to call me my pops passed no for sure yeah i was so gonna touch like, on that a little bit too just like a, little a bit. month after he passed i uh i got it tatted on yeah. my what is this shoulder Sh right shoulder, shoulder blade shoulder bone whatever <laughs> collar yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Right here. Okay, okay. And what about the Fresh Dior? That was back in your, like, Fresh Dior days. came from my twin, Durham. Mm -hmm. He, he, he really, he really came up with Cali, too. Okay. But Cali sounded better. Really, Fresh Dior came from gaming, the gaming world. Yeah. They used to call me that, because that was my username, something along the lines of that. Mm -hmm. But then we transferred, transferred to Cali somehow. I don't know. Like, it's, it's just... That's yeah. just what they called me back For sure, then. For sure. And we got a couple of things in common. You know what I'm saying? You, you touched on your dad yeah. and uh, Father's Day just passing. Yeah. My dad passed away, you know what I'm saying, back in like uh, 2000. So it's been a minute. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So when, when, your, uh, when your dad passed? My dad passed uh, June 25th, 2014. Okay. So it'll be nine years on Sunday. Yeah. Now, how did that affect you growing, like, you know what I'm saying, growing up or, or even as an adult now, like, with your, with your father, you know what I'm saying, passing away and not being around. Well, really, to be real, I was like 18 when he passed. So it was like, I don't really know. Like, yeah. I was an adult technically, but yeah, not for sure. mentally. Yeah, exactly. Obviously, I don't think no 18 year old really an adult for me. No, like, <laughs> no. When, I, when he passed, I don't know. Like, it affected me because I was supposed to go uh, out of state and play basketball at yeah. Penn State. Okay. And they had me coming there on a scholarship and everything. Yeah. And the day I was going to commit, he suddenly died that morning. Damn. So, in my head, I was like, forget basketball. My mama a heart patient. Yeah. So, it was like, forget basketball. I don't want to be like nine-hour drive away from her mm -hmm. when... If something go wrong. Yeah, you you can't just get get there quick. Yeah. Yeah. But she pushed for me to still go to college, so I ended up going to Western Michigan and not playing basketball at all. Oh, yeah. Cause, so you lost the love once he had passed? Yeah, because it's like he was at, he ain't never missed like no nothing. Mm -hmm. I, I could be singing in the choir, he there. For sure. If I'm hooping, he there with the cooler, bringing the cooler of water for the whole team, <laughs> yeah, exactly. bringing Gatorade. Those for be the those good team. dads too. Boy. I my, both of them though, my mom and my daddy, like yeah. you know. Yeah. So, like, I don't know. Like, I just felt like if I was to go to Pennsylvania, my mama wouldn't even be able to be at my games, let alone my pops. So I just was like, yeah. No, I'd be I like that. Do it. No, because if my pops was still here, he'd take that drive. Like, oh no. He'd drive to see where, where, whenever. He'd get up and drive to me at 3 in the morning. He didn't did it before. I was at a sleepover. I called, like, come get me, man. <laughs> come get me now. He's mm -hmm. like, he didn't even ask why. My mom was asking why. But he didn't even, he like, come on, put your clothes on, let's go. For sure. Gonna pick her up now. Yeah. So, I ain't really had that when he passed. Like, because my mama don't really like to drive for real. So, mm -hmm. nine hours away, 
Yeah. You might catch a flight, but how <laughs> often are you doing that? Yeah, exactly. I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't all the time. So I was just like, forget hooping for real. I really said forget everything. Yeah. But my mama wanted me to go to school, so I ended up at Western. No, that's I know how they did because like when my mom passed, my little brother at the time was a senior at, uh, in high school, and he was hooping. And right after that happened, he played like one more year in JUCO at Junior College. And he was like, man, I'm good. I don't, I ain't got the love no more because the person who was there and was like rooting me on, cheering me on, ain't there no more. So it's kind of different. Yeah. Even though he was, he was a baller. I like, used to be giving people work, but it's like, I'm, yeah. and people don't understand it. But I understood that, like, once you missing that, that important piece in your life, it's kind of hard to do the things that you love, especially if there was a part of it. For sure, for sure. You, you know what I'm saying? What, now, uh, you, you, another thing we got in common. You hoop for Bradford. I coached at Bradford. You Where know what you coach there? I coached at Bradford back in uh, 2016. Oh, so you seen my banner on the wall? Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I was the, the track and cross country, yeah. the, uh, uh, cross country, the track banner, and the hooping banner, all yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. So I co I coached the uh, I coached the middle school side. They wanted me to come to the high school side. I coached the girls, but then it was just some bull. It was some bull crap with the AD who was there. Yeah. But yeah, so and my wife worked at Bradford. Well, she still worked at Bradford. She's a pre-K teacher. Okay. So yeah, so you was a hooper. You was you was giving out buckets then, huh? Man, you taking ankles, putting my <laughs> ankles on the trophy case, <laughs> getting buckets, dropping. Man, what? Mm -hmm. Come on, now. Man, now can you, can you hoop? About that? Can you hoop? Hoop? You can hoop, hoop, bro. Are you done I with it? Like, ain't no. That, you don't still do it? That's crazy because I really just picked it back up. For real? Yeah. Man. I'm about to go ahead and try to play for a season or whatever and see where I can take it because I it's like a waste of talent for real. Like I was really talented as a kid growing up. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like in high school, I kind of lost my way with it because I had a coach who, you know, you specifically got a coach to how a player going to learn. For sure. Everybody not going to learn from criticism. Mm -hmm. And everybody not gonna learn from being talked too soft. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you gotta, yeah, you gotta know, yeah, him. you gotta know who they are. And you yeah. might gotta talk soft to him. You yeah. know? So it was just, it was that. Like I didn't have a for sure well, right you definitely... coaching that keep my head on where I needed to have yeah. it. At. Was your coach back then? Was her? It was a was it a lady named Miss Taylor? No. Okay, okay, she must have came after you then. Yeah, had to because uh, the, the my freshman and sophomore year varsity coach was coach Dana Plummer. Mm -hmm. Then my junior and senior year, they had switch clothes. Dana went to go coach the dude, the mm -hmm. boys team varsity. And what? Keith Calloway came in. And yeah. he, he kind of like really picked up the pieces for real. Like we, we he yeah. was a good coach. Well, well she, Dana was too. Was she one who was tripping though? Who? I heard some junk about it. Some lady who was a coach up there and started tripping like and broke into the school and started stealing the junk. Oh no! Okay. No, nah. I was there after the fact. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So they had a coach, they had a coach there that started just tripping. I don't know. If she was like got. A, I, a I never drugs. had a female coach. Yeah. Well, I did in like middle school was Coach Olson. She but she was the gym teacher though. Yeah, so yeah, 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 for sure. Yeah, you going to come up to one of my practices then? I yeah. coach the girls team at uh. I come get at Warren buckets. Academy. Yeah, for sure. Heck yeah, yeah. Come get these. That's what's up. Shout out to Bradford. Y'all did me dirty. I won a championship and y'all got rid of me because y'all wanted to bring y'all own people in. Uh, Shout nah. out to y'all though. Uh, <laughs> nah, that is like they that. did me. They did me dirty. Right? I'm talking about the next day. We had that boy working out. He like, yeah, we don't need you. We want some of our own people. I'm like, dang, we just won. Look. So did you run? Did you win the um? The championship for the league or yeah, the little charge. State. Well, you know, for the middle school for the league. Okay, yeah, I was yeah, in middle yeah. school. Yeah, so I was gonna like, wait to go to high school once my son graduated high school. That's why I wanted to coach high school. Okay, because I, I want to be able to go to his games too. So I ain't want to, yeah. you know, what I'm saying miss that opportunity or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But shout out to them anyway. You know, y'all know y'all mad though. That's all good. Yeah, shout out to my boy <laughs> dogs. They know yeah. what they is. Heck yeah, yeah. But no, talk about you though. This year, like how things been going for you this year? We halfway through it. You know, what I'm saying what's been going on with you personally with this year. Uh, not much personally for real. Mm -hmm. I've been really like locked into my studio mm -hmm. and working on this project for real. Like it started off as a project where I was solely producing it, mm -hmm. but it is it wasn't working out how I wanted it to. So I brought my boy Savage Beats along with me. So we gonna co-produce the whole project. Yeah, like, all you know collab beats and. Yeah, because y'all you supposed to put something out like last like last year, right? Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. What, so that's what you talking about? Like that's what that's what you still working on? Yeah, but it's yeah, but oh. it's it's not just me now. It's me yeah, it's somebody selfish. else. Yeah. Okay, okay, okay. What's some junk? What you learned about yourself this year that you didn't even know? Like yeah, you was capable of, or like you know, what I'm saying just something that you learned about yourself, something new. Something new. Mm hmm. Mm, I don't really know. 
Something new about me? Yeah, what's something you learned about yourself? Let me think. You, you, I know you learned something. Pick something up, whatever it was. Make or it could be some bad. Like damn, I'm on some bull. Like I, I can be, I can be doing a whole lot better. Like you know what I'm saying? I don't really know what I learned about myself. Yeah. Really. What shit you learned to put, already... the, put the basketball back up? Yeah, that, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Catch me on the court near you soon, coming soon. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm see if she got some buckets, y'all. No, I, I ain't never hooping against nobody younger than me. Look. I'm good. My 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 playing days is over. Y'all I try got to hoop. the knees. Heck, no, I got the knees, the lungs, <laughs> nothing. I ain't got the stamina, none of that junk, dog. For real. Now, kind of go back on your dad, but not go back on your dad. But it's like when things when times get hard, who can you who can you talk to? You know what I'm saying? It's gonna keep it real with you. You know what I'm saying? Of course, you got moms and stuff, but. Yeah. What's, who's that other piece of you know ear you can get from you know what I'm saying that's gonna really take the time and listen and, and give you some positive advice? Really? Uh, well, he's not my twin, but I call him my twin, Daryl. Mm -hmm. That's my like. That's like. That's really was like my twin growing up. Our birthday is ten days apart. That's my cousin, but we real close, like brother sister. Like talk almost every other day. Like. He doing good. He make sure I'm doing good. Mm -hmm. uh, that's that's who really I go to if I really just need to talk about something for real. Yeah. I don't necessarily go outside my circle or what I'm used to mm -hmm. or the norm. You know, yeah. I don't really rely on friends for real. Yeah. Cause friends that really ain't your friends these days. No, for sure. No, so no, no, no I really kind of try to keep it where I know, like, you you going to be my cousin for the rest of my life. Like, yeah. I'm going to see you at every family event. So for sure. Why not? You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, Tell yeah. him and... Because that's who I've been with my whole life for real, you mm -hmm. know? Like, from birth, yeah. 10 days apart. Yeah, like, I know. Y'all so so both Sagittarius then. Yeah. No, he a Capricorn. Okay, 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 okay. I'm yeah. December 19th. He December 29th. Yeah, see, because my daughter's birthday is December 15th. My son December Sagittarius, 13th. Sagittarius. Yeah. Sag gang. Yeah, I don't know about them. I don't know nothing about hey, that. Hey, <laughs> Sag gang. <laughs> yeah. Now, you said you had, to, you know what I'm saying, you had kind of like dropped everything, but what motivated yeah. you to pick, you know what I'm saying, the music and just the stuff that you was loving and pick it back up? Really, the DJ world, because... Mm -hmm. When I stopped hooping, I went to school, and when I was at school, I was really just, like, chilling yeah. in my dorm one day, and then somebody happened to walk past, and he was a DJ, too. Mm -hmm. But I was in there, like, mixing, and he like, hey, I got a turntable up up in my dorm, woo, woo, woo. Yeah. But he was, like, on some cool, he wasn't trying to slide on me. Like, you could tell if somebody sure, tried yeah. to slide <laughs> on me. He was on some cool. That's my boy, Cordero. Shout out to him. Mm -hmm. But from there... It went to me DJing for yeah. real, and and getting into this music world, it's like why not do beats too? Mm -hmm. Cause I'm around the artists. Yeah, all might the time. as well. Yeah, it's right there in your face. Yeah. Yeah. And from doing beats and engineering, you know, you start making money eventually. Yeah, then, yeah. When you start making money, you might as well go ahead and keep that junk up. Yeah. Now, what you saying? Like he ain't trying to slide on you. Yeah. No. <laughs> by you by you being a young lady, like and you doing this stuff with this music stuff, is it hard to have these relationships with dudes when? That sometimes you might want to take it to, you know what I'm saying, a yeah. different level. Yeah, I mean, it's, it, I wouldn't say it's hard. I would say it is what it is. Mm -hmm. like, I got a dress code when I, I'm around dudes. Like, you're not going to see my cheeks out <laughs> if I'm around <laughs> sure. a group of dudes and I'm on some work and really yeah. getting some money. I'm not a model, so you're not going to see, you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. all of that. Mm -hmm. It's really a dress code I operate by, so when you see me dressing like, a dude or dressing what I call as comfortably, mm -hmm. you feel me? Because I, I prefer a jogging suit over jeans and booty shorts yeah. any day. But <laughs> that's sure. just me. For that's sure. just yeah. me. Yeah. I yeah. like jogging suits. That's what I prefer, you know? Yeah, yeah, Booties, yeah. Jogging suits, t-shirts. That's what you probably going to catch me in. No. So you never been in an uncomfortable situation? Because, you know, a lot of times, I know a couple of ladies I had on the show, they got DMs about, you know, saying, I want to work, I want to work. And then after that, it turned to some old different type of conversation. Yeah, I mean, I ain't gonna say uncomfortable. I know how to handle myself if that situation ever come about. But mm -hmm. yeah, I've been presented with people who I was supposed to be doing business with that wanted to do other things, and yeah. I'm like, no. Nah. <laughs> yeah, for sure. You know, yeah. that can give you two reactions. They can say, okay, accept it for what it is, and yeah. proceed, or he. Uh, just disappear, yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah, because <laughs> I ain't, yeah, like, hey, well, Kelly, you want to work with some beats, and then that's you know, like, hold on, dog, you in, you sending yeah. graphic pictures and like you going crazy, but that's why I say it got to be tough for women 
in the music game because of dudes like that, like yeah. dudes using that as their advantage to try to get on and stuff like that. So you guys just be careful when you mess with these slum bags. For sure. <laughs> for no, sure. for sure. I got dark, so I got to make sure I be on her head when she grew up. She yeah. young, and I'm already thinking about the bad stuff. Man. <laughs> Look, don't, don't rush growing up. That's what I would tell her. Man. Don't rush growing no, up. No, you guys, yeah, that's for Stay real. Stay as young as you can for as long as you can. Mm-hmm. Because there's nothing really out here for real, but... Yeah, slum but bills. bags. Yeah, and, and bills. Got, yeah, good people, but... You know. Weird. Now, speaking of, you said you just said want to be a kid, staying a kid. What's your what was your first adult decision you had to make? Like, dang, like, it's real. Um, either get in an apartment or staying in the dorms mm -hmm. at school. Okay. Because the apartment was the step up. It was really like you got the responsibility of having an apartment, which come with bills, more yeah, bills sure. than yeah. just your school bill, but. <laughs> At the same time, the dorm had its ups and downs, too. So, it was like, do I want this whole crib and get this refund check <laughs> and, and try to be responsible sure. with it and pay the rent up with it? Yeah. Or do I want to just do the dorm and I ain't got to worry about nothing? From exactly. Me? Get that money in your pocket. But, yeah, I eventually chose my own apartment, though. So, so you graduated? You did the whole four, the four I years? I didn't graduate, but I did do a long time. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> You go, graduate is that Jack, something you want to plan on going back and maybe? Yeah, that's what I'm on now. I'm going back to school. That's what I'm yeah. picking up the ball back up. Yeah, go ahead and do that. I tried that. I, mm -hmm. I went to school for like four, three, four months. And as soon as I had that baby on the way, I'm like, you know what? I'll come back. I'm still saying that. I've been saying that for a long time. Go it, back, man. I might I might try to pick it up and, and see what I could do. Now, when the last time you cried, what was the reason? The last time I cried. Mm -hmm. You too thuggy to say it? No, okay. I remember I was boiling my eyes out because yeah. my wisdom too. The back <laughs> left boy, the back left boy was, boy, I woke up. I, I'm like, what is, did, a, did somebody punch me? Like, no, 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 that's my face, boy. boy. While I was in the living room, boiling my dog, come trying to <laughs> look Man. confused. Like, what is going no. on? Why is she yeah, them tea problems is worse than anything in the world. Man, the wisdom too. If I went and got it took out, I don't know. Mama, find me a dentist, please. Man, no, I don't care what. No, they for talk. sure. That junk had you. That junk had me on the ground crying one time. All right, looking for me. I was on the ground for real in tears. That junk is terrible, though. For real, for medicine real. wasn't working. I'm like, no, nah, this boy got to come on out. I ain't even about to play with him so, no more. So you said that's the last time, huh? Yeah, that was it. Yeah. Now you in music? Mm -hmm. If you had to tell someone about yourself through a song or an album, without even speaking any words, what song or album would that be for you? Dang. Yeah, real life question. Huh. You, know. you just gotta push play, and that's that, and that's the story. I would say, account. I would say this. I'm gonna say this. All right. Shameless plug. For sure. Big day, so many chances. Mm hmm. What, what and you, Big day is the artist. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What's that song talking about? It's just like he gave everybody so many chances. Like folks ain't believing mm -hmm. any and. Folks stabbing him in the back, bad friends. Mm. You know what I'm saying? The first line is, these really ain't your friends. You mm -hmm. know what I'm saying? They just here to pretend, you know, pretend. For sure. So, like, yeah, he, he, he really, that song relate to me the most off his last project. Mm -hmm. That's like, that's right now. Yeah. Me in this headspace I'm in currently, yeah, mm -hmm. I would say big day. Yeah. So many chances y'all listen to. It. Now, now, do you feel like you prove like you got to prove a point with what you do? Mm -mm. Like you, you ain't you don't feel like you got like okay, but I'm a, I gotta show people this because like you know mm -hmm. with everything we do we prove with hooping you 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 already know how it is and hooping and stuff you trying to prove that you the you know what I'm saying code is and with this podcast I'm trying to prove that my my junk is better than whoever else got something going on. Do you gotta <laughs> make a a point with this you know what I'm saying being a DJ being yeah. a, a beat maker like you trying to prove a point? No, I don't got no point to prove. Not even to yourself? No, I know what I'm capable of. Mm -hmm. I know where I'm headed. That's why I decided to, you know, pick up some school again and just educate myself because I know where I'm headed. For I sure. know, like, it's inevitable, especially mm -hmm. when you're consistent and you're persistent. It's, yeah. It's going to happen. See, that's the main thing is One being way consistent. Or another. Because a lot of people do this stuff, but they're not consistent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, start something and be like, all right, bet we see a couple episodes here or a couple tracks here, and that's why I don't like like when people do music and they be hitting me up about getting on the show, and then when I like look through their catalog and the last project they, they dropped was like three years ago, and they ain't dropping nothing in between. It's like, why would I have you on the show if you can't even be consistent with what you do? 
Like, what's the point? Yeah, it's consistency. That's the key for real. Yeah, for sure. No, for you sure. You gotta keep your keep yourself booked and busy. Yeah, if, no. If that's what you're gonna do. So, how you feel about when people drop albums? Like, because nowadays I'm seeing people drop more singles than albums. Yeah. They stand away from the album, or if they do drop an album, it's like a short EP. What you feel about that? Like, do you feel like they need to get they 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 fan base to a certain point before they just start giving out body of work? Because that shit do cost money, like to make yeah. you know for studio time and beats and stuff like that. Yeah, I feel like it's it's specific to whoever that artist is, or maybe mm -hmm. it's not no blueprint on how they should drop their music. Like maybe they artists might not listen to if you put a ten song album out and they check the algorithm on it on the first week and mm -hmm. they not making it to the ninth and tenth song because they burnt out by yeah. then. Yeah, for sure. Maybe you do need to drop a smaller project or mm -hmm. an EP. But, you know, it's just specific to whatever audience you try to cater to, for real. No, Some yeah. people, if maybe, like, people my age and up, you know, 35, 40, maybe, mm -hmm. and under, they might listen to shorter, you know what I'm saying? But maybe somebody 45 and up, mm -hmm. listen to longer yeah, for sure. song no. length or album length. It's it's just specific to whatever audience you're yeah. really trying to cater to. Because kids got short attention No, for sure. They're going to listen to it at one time. Adults do too. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, for sure. But that's why I think nowadays probably the, the EP is six, seven songs, eight songs yeah. is probably the thing to do right now. You know what I'm saying? Because like a lot of times if you – people don't want to listen to nothing more than 15. You know what I'm saying? Or unless all 15 songs going to be Unless you song. Chris Brown. That be <laughs> 75 song albums. He's the only person that they can get away with that junk. I'll be listening to all that junk. <laughs> sit there and listen to the whole thing, too. Heck yeah. All right, now, away from that, we're going to get back to your, your DJing and music and stuff like that. But let's yeah. talk about growing up. Like, where you where you from? What side of town you from? Who's in the crib? You know what I'm saying? All that good stuff. I'm from the West Side. You know? Of course, everybody from the West Side. The West God, Side yeah. is the best side. Man, just tell everybody my mama from the West Side, man. Look, no, the east west side. side is the best side. The east side is the weak side. Oh, Everybody crazy. knows that. Right, Everybody I'm let, knows. I'm gonna let you get away with that. You a guest. I'm gonna let you get away with that. <laughs> you know, what I'm saying? I, I stand west side now, but no, I'm good. Where, so where where did you start? Oh, east east. Now look where you at. It's all hey, I'm saying. <laughs> that's because my wife. That's just because of her. It wasn't for her. I wouldn't be. I would probably be in Detroit necessarily. I'd be in the east side suburbs or something like that. You I know see. what I'm saying? So who's so who's in the crib with you? Like what was going on in the house? My mama and my daddy, for the most part, mm -hmm. not much going no on siblings? in the house. My pops was, you know what I'm saying, sick mm -hmm. from far as back I can remember. My mama was, too, so okay. two disabled parents is, yeah. and me. Okay. That's what it was. So do you feel like growing up, like, by, by that being a situation, kind of like, I ain't going to say you had to grow up quick, but, like, you just had to be a little different from other kids your age? Yeah, you just had to be more responsible in, in certain moments than mm -hmm. you would have to be versus if you didn't have sickly parents. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? For Some sure. uh, It was an instance where my mama was in the hospital and she just had heart surgery, but my pops had to get taken to the hospital. I took him to the hospital. My brother had to come get me, and I'm at my brother's house now. Yeah. So, you know, it's, you know. Yeah. It was just different scenarios growing up where I did have to, you know what I'm saying, Take my pops to the hospital. He might have something went wrong. Yeah, or for sure. Take my mama or. Yeah. Sometimes it was I didn't have to take nobody. They could take each other. You know, it was just. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. but it, it, you do have to be more responsible in certain moments. Then. No, for sure. But that can help you in, in the long run as far as growing up, because you already kind of like know what it is to yeah, you know, you know what to do for real. Yeah, yeah, and, and, and you know the signs of certain things. And opposed to somebody who's been baby, you know what I'm saying? So when they get to those adult situations or those adult moments, they don't know how to react. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah, dang. Yeah, but yeah, I see. Yeah, my job was yeah. See, my 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 pops up. My mom was just gone. Like, see, I was in the crib by myself just because my mom had to take up that slight for her for him being gone. So now she working double. So I'm in that mother making pork chops at nine years old, <laughs> burning up, by, trying not to burn the house up and junk, all that good stuff. But no, so at the college, yeah, you, you, you know what I'm saying. You say you ain't finished. You going back though? What was life like for you then? Man, what? What, what was going on? What was it? What was what everything? What a time to be alive. That's when that came out. What a time to be alive. Future and Drake. Yeah. What a time to be alive, man. Yeah. Talk about it. 2014 to 2019. That's when I was. Out there on and off in school, mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, that was it was lit though. Like, 
Yeah. Were you lit. having a little bit too much fun? Like, was taking you was taking? Like, no, it wasn't that. It was I was too busy. Mm-hmm. I got I started to where I was getting like book, 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 like because this is. Let me start you. I'm gonna go all the way back. Go ahead. So, what started is remember I told you about my bro, and I had started DJing with bro, but we was just in the dorm. Yeah. From the dorms, somebody asked, like, do y'all DJ DJ? And we like, I mean, we do it. <laughs> yeah, for sure. They like, well, we got a fashion show. We looking for a DJ. Woo, woo, woo. Mm-hmm. We do the fashion show together. Yeah. From there, I got booked everywhere. Okay. Like, I didn't know that the fashion show was going to be as big as, as it was. was. Yeah. But it was like a large fashion show for the whole west side of michigan i mm. didn't know i was thinking like something like yeah, something was small. In a classroom saying there might be like two three hundred people no yeah. it was like yeah so mm. from there we started getting booked and i met sick music which is my brother to this day mm. we was on the radio together 80, 88.1 mm. fm widr out there him and um dj incredible dj chuck yeah them is my people from way back. Okay. You feel me? So yeah. that's how I got into it. Real, like, for real, for real. They was like, they was like the top two DJs. They was like, who was the top DJs in Detroit? They was like DJ Limelight, you know, this Gucci DJ. And mm-hmm. like, I don't know, DJ BJ. Like, okay. yeah. they was like them out there. Okay. So they booked and they giving me all they bookings they can't get to because they yeah. already booked up so yeah. from there i'm getting busy 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 then i'm on the radio mm-hmm. from the being on the radio it just opened a whole nother can of you yeah. know what I'm so, saying? so at that point the fashion show after yeah. that was over is that, is that the point that you took that junk like, like all right i'm gonna take this i'm gonna take it serious because i see like yeah. yeah i'm capable of doing that junk yeah man man listen the fashion show is really the staple bro yeah that's that's where it's at. Yeah, that's where it really started at. But I was I start I was DJing like my high school event sometimes. Like I would control the music. Mm. But from there, that when I was in school, like that's what started. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Everything for real. Now it was like a snowball effect. Now how much pressure is it? Like you saying you got all these people that came to the show like being a DJ. How much pressure is it being a DJ? Like, having the right song and all that junk like. Make sure you cater to the right crowd. I'm quite sure this event is different from that event, so you can't have the same track list. You know what I'm saying? So mm-hmm. how much pressure is that with being a DJ and knowing your crowd? Like, And when do you learn, like, all right, I know, all right, I'm, I'm at this place. I got 30 and better. Like, I got players. Yeah. Or I got some young kids. I got players. Like, when did you, when did you learn that? Man, it wasn't nothing to learn for real. It was just you adapt to your environment. Mm-hmm. You cater to the crowd. You know what I'm saying? If if the head's not bobbing, turn it off. Yeah. Some, something else. For sure, for sure. And if they start bobbing, stay in that lane for yeah. a minute. Then try something else eventually, you know, mix, master. You know? Yeah. But you just catering to the crowd. Like, yeah, I got the kid stuff for kid events. I can do clubs. I can do gentlemen's clubs. I can do tours. Mm. So I have done all of the above, radio yeah. and everything else. So it's like I got the clean and the... You know what I'm saying? It's just about catering to for sure. your crowd, though, like, for real. What's the one song you got to play no matter what, no matter the crowd, no matter the age? What's that one song you got to play? Because I can imagine what the song is. Jug Hard and Jewelry. Mm-hmm. I'm talking about the old people, young people, no matter what it is, they going to listen to it? Yeah. Yeah. To I thought you, you probably would say, what's that? I got name? videos of old, I was at a... I don't know, maybe, like, she was turning 65, but she was like, play something hype. Like, I want to hear, like, no. the hood stuff. I'm like, okay. Yeah. I turn on Jug Hard Jury, and the old people get in there and get the bopping around. I'm like, yeah. oh, okay. So you're like, okay, I see where we at now. Yeah. Like, okay, I see what type of party this is. See, yeah. I thought you would have said, back that thing up. That, <laughs> but, <laughs> hey, look. Cause that's on God play. No matter, I don't care how old you are. Yeah. From high Them school, it takes nine you, a, nines in the two thousands. Yes. You could be, you could be sixteen or you could be sixty six. If you play bad that thing up, I guarantee everybody and their mama gonna be out there backing it up. <laughs> <laughs> fact, bad, no. bad that's that a thing. Fact. No, that's a fact. Shout out to Juvie. Yeah, bad that thing up. You got big booty, no booty. You out there backing it up. And every guy that, is looking for that that, that backup. It's a couple of those though. Like it's that. Mm. You got uh, 
Dream Chaser. Oh, yeah, for sure. Meek Mills, for sure. Dreams and Nightmares. For sure. You got T Grizzly. First day out. Oh, yeah, you got to play that, That's yeah. in Detroit anywhere. Yeah, yeah. The Tamiya Hustle. Hello. Oh, yeah, got to play that. Oh, yeah. People <laughs> out there don't even know how to do it. Trying, yeah, for sure, you got to. You might not play that in a uh, gentleman's club, but mm -hmm. everywhere else, Tamiya Hustle is, yes. What's the weirdest spot you had to DJ? The weirdest spot? Mm hmm Hmm. Huh. I don't know. You ain't never had Everything is pretty much just like, it's repetitory. For mm -hmm. Repetitive. Okay, now for people that don't know, a good DJ versus a trash DJ. Um, a trash DJ don't know how to blend. Yeah, this is just, just doing just some crazy. Huh? Yeah, you said a good DJ. He he reading the room, so he already yeah. know what to how to keep the the party going. Now you uh you mentioned uh Jug Harden. Yeah. And you become his his official DJ. Yeah. How, how did that come about? That's my brother, bro. Mm -hmm. Jug is. He, I've been on Jug since middle school. Okay. So, when Jug first started rapping, and he was playing his music for me, I'm like, bro, take this serious. Start, you feel me? Like, push this. Yeah. Keep, keep going. Yeah. Kept going. Yeah. And that's just what it is. I was his DJ from, he like... He like you be my DJ. I'm like yeah. Yeah, <laughs> it's been going ever since. Let me be your DJ. Yeah, yeah, we on that. Now with you being a DJ, do people be coming to you trying to think they can get a hold to him? Like oh yeah, she yeah. she a plug. So let me <laughs> go ahead. For sure. Yeah. For sure. I had somebody D DM me. Mm -hmm. I was doing a release party for my other artist, Big Day. Okay. And he DM me. He was basically like, um, I want to do media for the party. And I'm like, okay, you can. Mm -hmm. You know, pull up with your camera or whatever. Yeah. You get a recap video. Um, To put him on the list or whatever. Then he DM'd me back again. was like, <laughs> so let me be honest. I'm just trying to get the jug. Like, I'll do your work, but I just want to, I want to work with the jug. I'm really like, do you, can you contact me with his manager? Mm -hmm. But I went on his page and it was like, <laughs> bro, what are you, what? That's what I'm really? saying. For what? Yeah. Like, who do you want from, bro? Like, man. <laughs> what you want? That's what I'm saying. Yeah, people. <laughs> oh, man. So, yeah, yeah. That's, it's plenty of instances yeah. like that. But I just, you know. Now, have you ever came cute. across somebody that was kind of like, all right, they hard. Maybe I should tell bro about him. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes they yeah. go through with the play. Sometimes they be on BS. You know, yeah. you never know with people. No, but for sure, I for sure. I just pass him along anything that I feel like he can get paid off of. Yeah. That's just what it is. That's what, and that's what happened. That's, that's kind of like the downfall of knowing or being associated with somebody as, as known in the city or whatever because they think, all right, bet, we get to her or we get to him, easy. You know what I'm saying? I, we yeah. on. <laughs> it, it, it is it's really not like that, bro. That's that's my brother, but I'm not just, you know, mm. we not loose with it. Now, y'all you, you, came up together. You've been working with him for a long time. A lot of people, you know what I'm saying, they work together. They be in these rela relationships if it's, you know what I'm saying, if it's manager, artist, mm -hmm. um, um, whatever it is. But once money comes into the into the picture, that's when things start to, you know what I'm saying, fall apart. Like, with you and the people that you work with, what are you going to do or what would you do to make sure that that, that, that never happened? Like, money will never get in between y'all. Well, number one, I ain't, bro, DJ for money. Like, I just, I genuinely believe that he can be the biggest artist in the world mm -hmm. that's just from day one he know that he'd okay. tell you i was the first person believe in his music for real like i was taking his music putting it on the radio in kalamazoo and grand rapids and and uh battle creek and ben harbor mm -hmm. like i was really trying to push bro music like just out on the west side of the state not a let alone in detroit but you know yeah that's my brother for real. Like I feel sure. like I feel like he really can be him mm -hmm. for real. Like uh, yeah. Now what about the new? Not, oh my bad. Uh, sorry. Uh, I I'm not in it for money though. That's that's just what it is. For sure. Now what yeah. about the new people that you working with now? Like you say you about to do this collaboration with another person, another producer. Yeah. Or like you said the, the other artist that you working with. What's his name again? Big Savage Day. Savage Beats. No, oh, the, my other artist, yeah. Big Day. Yeah, so, like, what about those relationships? Like, that's the same type of, like, y'all just coming in, like, y'all yeah. want to work together. like Because yeah. I think money, when people be money hungry, that's what mess up situations. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? When it's all about the dollar and it ain't about what y'all, you know what I'm saying, the love of it, that's what mess up the situation. Yeah, yeah, no, no, no. Day is my brother. Savage, my brother. It's, it's all love. We split 
everything that we make down the middle. And it's never been no okay. question. I ain't never had to question none of the three above about no no money or whatever. Like, For sure. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, we do this thing sometimes with artists. Like, we take the title of their track and get a story from it. Mm-hmm. So we're going we gonna to go off the jug tape. That's just last, the last tape you put up, right? Yeah. So uh, one track, Mediocre. Do you feel like a lot of mediocre rappers make it in the city just because, of like, I don't know, because, of like, who they are, who, you know what I'm saying, who they know? You feel me? Because a lot of times it'd be like, damn, like, how do they get to where they at without hating? But, you know what I'm saying? Like, you see somebody else who really should be at that level. Like, you know what I'm saying? So what do you think, how you think these mediocre artists, rappers, singers, whatever, get to, you know what I'm saying, where they at when you feel like they shouldn't? I feel like I wouldn't necessarily call any of the artists mediocre artists. I just feel like if they if they putting up the numbers, then they obviously then figured out their audience. And mm-hmm. I'm not necessarily everybody's audience. For sure. I don't necessarily want to listen to a certain artist or that type thing. And mm-hmm. that's just might be me, but... You might like him, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you sure. might be spending him all day and <laughs> yeah. him and you and whoever else he'd have figured out to get his music to. So, you know, I, I don't ever judge off per se my specific opinion. I judge off the numbers. For sure. If you didn't find your audience, that's just what yeah, it you is. gotta run with it. Yeah. Now boss or worker. When do you know is it time that you gotta be a boss sometimes you gotta fall back and be a worker? Like Talk about that. Like, have you ever have had a situation where you had to like just I got fall back and play the field and be at work, or I got step up and you know what I'm saying take over the situation? Yeah, for sure, for sure. What's some shit? What's some shit that happened that you could think of just offhand? This is like as a DJ in general. It's like you sometimes I'm curating the party and it's my event mm-hmm. and I'm DJing, and sometimes it's somebody else's event. And I'm just coming in and. To cater to is this might be a country event. I'm yeah. coming in to play country music. <laughs> For sure. You know, and I'm falling in line with that. But you know, it's just depend on each situation for real. Mm-hmm. Now Michigan flow. You mm-hmm. feel like this is like we find our sound. Like before before Detroit, before Michigan, you had that Chicago sound, you had the Atlanta sound, you had the you know saying the Cali sound. You feel like this is a sound that's being copied and, and, and with the same thing, do you feel like we are kinda like Going on that, all right, I got to rap like this to make it. You know what I'm saying? Um, I feel like certain people do try to sound like other artists, but that's just because they think it sounded good when they heard it. For sure, so yeah. Think sounded is a word, but you know, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. But, you know, like, it just depend on, you know what I'm saying, who you are and mm-hmm. who hear your stuff for real. Yeah, because a lot of times it's be like, all right, bet, all right, this is Detroit. You already know you gonna get the Detroit beat, the Detroit sound. Everybody sound the same. That's why sometimes it's kind of good to hear a Detroit rapper like sound different from the, you know, what I'm saying from the crowd. You know, yeah. it's cool if you know, what I'm saying that that's your that's how you you coming up. But if you just want to be like, all right, I'm gonna rap tomorrow, and I heard Jug or I heard T or Sal that rap like this, man, I'm just gonna copy the whole flow and just run away with it. Yeah, it is people like that in the world. Yeah, and that's why I feel like all right, you gotta be original. Like, if it's just how it is, it's just how it is. But if you just Purposely doing that, then you need to go ahead and think of another career. For sure. You know what I'm saying? There's people like that that, yeah. Now, you got something like that called uh, How You Want It. Mm-hmm. When, when you 10, 15 years from now, like, how you want your career to be like? What do you see in that? 15 years from now, I see... <laughs> I just see money for real. Like, mm. whatever I'm going to do, I'm going to make some money. Okay. If I don't do nothing, I'm going to get paid. Yeah. And that's just what my goal is 10 to 15 years from now. Mm. I ain't really focused on nothing else, but, you know, figuring out how to get paid off what I love. Yeah, for sure. Now, Chase the Cat. <laughs> Have you ever seen people mess up situations from chasing women? Yes. Yeah, like, and like, what should be, like, when you're a new artist and stuff like that, like, it should be a balance. Like, you know, or you got to be focused, like, strictly, like, all right, I got to focus on this. Because a lot of times, like, I tell my son, is my son is 16. You know what I'm saying? You can't be chasing women. You got your whole life to chase women. Mm-hmm. Right now, you got to make sure these grades are straight. You got to make sure you focus on this hooping. Right. Then that other stuff is going to come. Right. So what would you say to a new artist that's coming out here, like, and you're seeing women is a, is a distraction? Like, what you going to tell that person? You just got to focus up, bro. You, you can't be distracted by 
something that's temp can be temp potentially temporary. Like you chasing forever, bro. <laughs> yeah, for like, sure. <laughs> Yeah. Money, diamonds are forever. Money, get, get to the bag. Mm -hmm. That's that's really what's more important. Uh. Yeah. People, these people gonna be out here. Everybody cheating on everybody. <laughs> I mean, like. Yeah, no, for sure. I just recommend you do you. <laughs> yeah. you feel me? No, for sure, for sure. People, they ain't. It, it, I was just talking to my uh, my cousin about that. Like, this it ain't loyalty. I don't think it don't exist no more. Like, and if you know you you if you know you're not committed to something, just go ahead, and just keep doing what you're doing. You ain't got to be in a relationship. Some people yeah. feel like they want the relationship and then they want to go ahead and just go ahead and do what they do. But no, nah, man, you have wasting your time and that person's time. I just feel like if y'all not getting to the bag together, yeah. what, what's the point? Yeah. I, don't, I don't see a point in it, for real. Now, what about you? Like, how are you in relationships? Like, do you Is that something that you be like, oh, I'm, I'm good? Or, like, can I'm you really focus on that? I'm good right now, for yeah. real. Like, been there, done that, tried that. Yeah. Don't need to try it right now. Maybe Focus on eventually, your, but yeah. I just got your heart broke or you broke the heart. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I, I ain't get my heart broke. Right? Yeah, ever got your heart broke before? No. Oh, okay. Um, I don't believe that, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> everybody got their heart broken, boy. Everybody ain't cried, left a voicemail. Wait. Maybe it was just me. <laughs> 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 I definitely left voicemails with, with playing playing a certain song like, and then they don't call you back like, dang, I wasted all my time. <laughs> or now I'm feeling stupid when you fake cry, fake cry for some love. Uh, now I'm now your fake cry like, dang, now I'm sitting here like a fool. Uh, yeah, no, well, we gonna lay off the off the off the off the hook with that one. I know she been, uh, she ain't broke her heart. Our heart broke. We, it's all good. We ain't got. I might have broke a heart, but I don't... yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now speaking <laughs> of rap, have you ever been in your rap bag? Yeah, when I was 16. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, not for real, though. Yeah, there ain't nothing that you... some YouTube, not really. I ain't never released nothing. Yeah. No, nah, so so you you felt like... So the whole producer thing, that just came into play just just off the DJing? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I was always making beats, though. Okay. I just was never sharing them with people. I just was just making beats. It's like a hobby, for real. Mm -hmm. The whole time, like, from... From 16 up, it was just like me trying things, trying different sounds out, for real. Then I just, one day started collabing with my brother. Mm -hmm. Really was just like my brother and yeah. me. Yeah. It was nobody else in it. And then we started, I was like, yeah. Mm -hmm. I know what good music sound like. I'm a DJ. Yeah. I've been a DJ for over 10 years. For sure. I know what good music sound like. And we started making good music. So yeah. I'm like, because at first it wasn't. You know, everybody go through they not making so good. Yeah, trash stage. Beats, yeah. Yeah, yeah, when yeah. you first start, but mm -hmm. when we got the hang of it, we start branching out and doing other things. And now, yeah, I done made it this far with it. You yeah. know, now we working on the project. Now, when you making y'all making beats and stuff to be unique and not sound like somebody else, do you gotta, gotta like block off listening to other stuff just so you can focus on your sound and creating? So, when I make a beat, I. I don't necessarily block out anything. Mm -hmm. I just, I just go into the beat and I just try to, in the simplest form, I just try to make, put sounds together that sound good. Yeah. And lay it out into a pattern and mm -hmm. lay down different melodies. That's just what I've been into and doing for a while. I don't never really try to cater to a sound. I never go into a beat saying like I'ma make the hardest. Jug beat or Sada Baby beat in yeah. the world right now, <laughs> sure. yeah, yeah. or I'm gonna make the hardest Usher, Scissor, yeah. Summer Walker beat in the world. Yeah. I never do that. Mm. I just go in there and just work. I just go in there and I just start playing melodies, and if mm. it sound good, lay it down. And if it don't trash, go it. from there. It just be just off my vibe for real, like no. how I'm feeling. Sometimes it might sound like a Detroit beat. Sometimes mm. it. Mike sound like a Summer Walker beat. You never know what yeah. you're going to get. It depends yeah. on how you feeling. Yeah, literally. Yeah. Now, is there anybody in particular that you want to work with that you haven't worked with as far as, like, in the city that you want to go ahead and tap with, tap with? Like, as far as what? Rap, rappers, like, singers, whatever, just artists in the city that you want to work with as far as your, your beats and stuff, production. Uh, I want to work with everybody. Mm. Everybody. You don't work with everybody. Whoever I ain't working with <laughs> yet. Yeah. Tap in. Now, hold on. So, you say that. I'm a trash rapper, but I got the money. You giving me that, that, that good beat you done made for my trash lyrics? How much you paying? 
<laughs> Whatever the beat is. Cause you know, a lot of times people don't want to be associated with a trans rapper. Like, no, I ain't about to waste my money. I mean, I ain't about to waste my beat but for you. Even though my, I don't care how much money. But you never know what he gonna do with the beat, though. You yeah. just gotta see what he do with it. And on the flip side, when he flip it and mm -hmm. send it to you for the clearance, then you know you figure out if you. Cause it's almost like you want to stay from trash. Like just like right now, a lot of these rappers ain't gonna want to work with Gunner cause they're. You know what I'm saying? Associate him with snitching. Yeah. And, and, and if he come out with a price, like a ticket, no matter what they what he give, a lot of people are going to refuse to work with him because they're going to be associated with him. You know what I'm saying? And that's that's only just only the artist that's really in the streets, though. Yeah. Like, if you're not in the streets and you from where from the suburbs and you never really been around no gangs or violence or for real, mm -hmm. and you've been safe for the most part all your life. Yeah. See, it's, 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 it's a new because I'm not. They they might work with yeah, bro. Like yeah. if you're really in the streets, so a lot of people that's really in the street don't respect it. Yeah, and that's just it is what it is. That, that's the one difference. Like these these new artists nowadays want to survive back in the day just off of, off the code. Like nowadays, like you you really your fans really love you no matter what you do. Yeah. Back then, your fans would turn on you in the quickness. Fifty Cent made everybody turn on Jaru. For nothing, he ain't even snitching that. He just, like, he just made everybody switch up on him. Like, so that's the difference now. Like, you got somebody like six nine, or he really, you know, what I'm saying was on some snitch stuff. But you still got, he still got fans. So like you said that earlier, it really, it really matter who your fan base is and you know, like that because they are gonna keep you going no matter what you do. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. You can come out with the trash, with the good stuff. Like, as long as you got a, a fan base, they gonna always stick by your sub. Yeah. Yeah. Now you do a review show too. Yes. You and your your peoples and stuff like that. Yeah. Like talk about that. Like, do you really be telling people how you really feel about the music? Like, or you always try to find some good even if it's trash. Okay. So the with the reviews, it's not necessarily a show. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily like I don't know, I I don't find myself consistent with it. It's just something that I do in my pastime, really. Mm -hmm. Or something I'm I'm bored and I'm just in the studio, I might got beat block i don't, can't pick up a melody or can't figure out what i want to do with the moment and that's what i feel like you know yeah go get different ideas and listen to different music that i could potentially put in my playlist when i'm djing okay at the same time so and then it, on the flip side i also do it to you feel me really help people mm -hmm. like because people really some people really want my opinion yeah not necessarily that i feel like i got a the biggest opinion in the world and it really matter for real for sure but i know what good music sound like and i can help you mm. if you listen for the most part yeah, yeah, yeah sometimes i'm not always right you yeah. know what i'm saying it might sound good how it is and i feel like you might could do something else with it but yeah. you know i just do it to help for real i don't do it for money mm -hmm. Only Man. way I make a dollar off of it is somebody skip the line. But. Yeah, cause some niggas be like fifty dollars, nigga. Review like no. I, I do you like do so you... like I could do that, but I yeah. don't for sure because it's not something that I do consistently, and it's just something I do when I'm bored for it. Yeah, me. but see, I even feel like with 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 the review shows or with other podcasters or you know shows and stuff like that, I feel like too many people trying to charge it, and I don't feel like I feel like. Some people ain't wor worthy to be charging. You know what I'm saying? Like, if your platform only doing so much, why are you charging so much money? It's like an artist. If you really not known, why are you charging a thousand for a feature? I see so many rappers or singers like, yeah, the bag going up. I'm like, but you getting this feature? What the fuck is it? What's it gonna do? Like, what? What? what it's not gonna change nothing about my song. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I just never understood that. So what you feel about like artists like charging these crazy prices and? Mm -hmm. It's not gonna make no 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 difference with the song. It's not gonna push the song no higher than what it would be if you was by yourself. Man, I don't know. Get it how you live. If yeah. You feel like you worth that, and you can find somebody that'll pay it. Yeah, half it at you, but I don't recommend wasting your money on something you're not really gonna benefit on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I mean, I seen somebody say, "Oh yeah, special for this month only." I'm like, dog, come on now, bro. That's it. Still too hot. <laughs> like, then with these shows, like, people be trying to charge. Come on, show, like, bro. This is special, dog. <laughs> <laughs> like, it's, that's crazy, man. Like, I had somebody tell me I had to pay them to come on the show for me to talk to them. Now, I'm not even interested in talking because I'm worried. I'm mad about the price that I just paid you to talk to you. So, yeah, just some, some of this stuff, they need to just, people just need to switch up how they do things, man. 
Because one one review show, it was charged like $40, $30. And I'm like, it's only like four people on the live. Like, uh, it's just, it's, I get bored. Mm-hmm. And I, this is literally how I go most times. Mm-hmm. I get bored. I'm like, I ain't doing nothing. Let me do something productive. Let me yeah. help somebody with their music. Because I didn't actually help somebody before. Like, somebody just sent music in that was like, we could tell you recorded it on your phone, sis. Yeah, yeah. So, she took it to... Who I told her to take it to and okay. re-recorded it, relayed it down, and sent in some fire. And yeah. I'm like, yeah. So people sitting there recording songs, full songs on the phone? Like, yes. is an app for there or something? They got to stop, man. <laughs> yes, they found apps that, yes, they got to yeah. stop, though. That's, we can tell. Yeah. We can tell it's not a... I wouldn't even Mike. feel right doing it, like just recording my phone, like I'm in a studio and then putting it <laughs> like, and just putting it out. Like, that, that's, that's crazy. And my thing is, like, Man, just go to the studio, man. I, yo, your homeboy is somebody who got a studio for the for the thirty an hour or something like that, man. You yeah, feel me? I used to live in those studios. And what about YouTube beats? How you feel Please about that? Stop doing the YouTube beats. <laughs> I was YouTube master, but I was ripping all that junk. I, I just it's <laughs> as a when I engineer and they come in with the same beats. Yeah. It's like you know it gets repetitive. Yeah. Just For leave. Sure. I feel like you should leave the YouTube beats alone. Man. <laughs> I definitely heard my beat on somebody else like that. That's that same beat I recorded. But no, but what if like you just, all right, I'm a new artist. I don't have much money, but I really love music. I really want to put the, do this. I really want to put it out. I ain't found this YouTube beat that I really love. I can't afford the real beat. Like, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So I'm going to go ahead and, you know, it's a free beat. I'm going to take it and I'm going to record it and do what I do. Would you, what would you, would you tell that artist to stack your money up and get you a legit beat or just, all right, bet. Go ahead, rock out with the YouTube beat and get your, you know what I'm saying, get it how you live till you get some more money. Well, if you use the YouTube beat, just make sure you're not trying to make no money off of it. Mm-hmm. And if you stack up your pay, yeah. that's how you're going to make your money off of it. For sure, so, yeah. yeah. I, feel, I recommend getting you a producer or find, figuring out something with whoever you found that produced the beat. Because if they did that one, they got plenty more like it. Yeah, I feel like so. Yeah, that's always funny to me, man. Cause like I said, back in my rap days, boy, I was a YouTube king. Like, let me go ahead and get that J Cole type beat, <laughs> <laughs> that Joe Hard type beat, like, <laughs> like Detroit type beat, like you know what? Uh, you can even go to Friday Day Out type beat, like you go know, like that. <laughs> you the, really can though, like yeah. they had dime a dozen on there. So it's man, like, my my YouTube just still got play this a lot. You gotta leave them alone. You got to. Yeah, real. Well, if you blow up that, but. I guess that's a bad thing too, cause if you blow up, you gotta get that dude his money, cause he gonna take your ass right to court. Man, I just seen it. So why, so why do producers put free beats on YouTube? Like, what's the point of doing it when you could just put it on like a? a what's they that? not free. Yeah. They not free. Okay, cause they, they. So look, if you to make any type of money off a of YouTube beat that is in the description, probably say. Free for non-profit. Mm-hmm. You done made profit. They're going <laughs> to yeah. make profit. For sure. So if they got a million views on this one beat, 20,000 people used it and tried to make profit off <laughs> of sure. it. Yeah, so yeah. that's their profit. Yeah. They, they get all the money. Yeah. That, that, so yeah. why not as a producer? But it's just mm-hmm. don't do it as an artist. For sure. Yeah, artist, man. Just go ahead and uh, find somebody you can tap in with. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can build together or whatever. Man. Duh. You know what I'm saying? I heard so many people rap on the same beat. It's crazy. Me too. Cause I was, I was like, damn, that sound just like the beat I had got. Cause <laughs> 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 that's just funny, man. Damn, shout out to y'all though. Hey, man. Hey, just save yeah. a couple of checks, man. Y'all be all right. Now, with the review, are you ever worried about telling somebody the truth? And you know, what I'm saying maybe worry about how you gonna, you know, t- take the the criticism. No, I tell them how I feel. Mm-hmm. If I feel like it need to be mixed and mastered, mm-hmm. hey, brother. Yeah. <laughs> get to the studio <laughs> Get to with your engineer Get it mixed and mastered Yeah If it need to be Reconstructed Or if the rhyme Ain't rhyming How it's supposed to rhyme It's not giving What's supposed to be gave I just That's what it is and Yeah I done had plenty of people In my DMs mad That I didn't like their song And it's yeah. like bro If you Had one song You should have Another song If you really an artist mm-hmm. And if you really You know Do this So yeah, it's sure. like Every song that you ever make in the world is not going to be a hit. No, not at all. And everybody is not going to like every song that you make in the world. And mm-hmm. that's just what yeah. it is. And that's, that's the, and that's the, that's, man, that's the results of submitting your music. 
You're going to get somebody that's going to say they ain't going to like it. You're going to get somebody that say they don't like it. Like, that's the risk you take. If you don't want no feedback, then just don't send it. Yeah. You feel me? Because a lot yeah. of people do that, John. I remember they was on KL here about that, John. Like, dog, just don't send it to dog. You feel me? And, and yeah. if he's, if it's some stuff that he said was trash, that was like, I'm like, shit, that shit was straight to me. Like, right? Like, everybody going to have their opinion. Yeah. Everybody is not going to like your music, and that's just what it is. Like, yeah. You know, but usually with the review, I just, it's just random, though. Like, I just be randomly called Aries. Aries. What you doing, bro? Nothing. Bored. Let's get. Let's do. Let's do a review. I'm yeah. bored. Cause you know, shout out yeah. to my brother Eric. Yeah, I be see you. You doing with you know, my dog Wiz. Yep, Wiz. Yeah, I been mean, know Wiz. Yep, he was Wiz like be like twelve. He was a little little dude. Like yeah, he be hopping in the live. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, I just never understood that. Like dog, you you send it. You send it a song again to get some feedback. Like I just never right. understood why people get mad though. You're just real. not gonna like everything everybody got to say. Like I, it's been plenty instances where. I didn't like the song, and Wiz did not like the song, and he told you that he did not like the song. But I told you I liked it. Or vice versa. I said, I don't really like that, and Wiz, like, that's fire. Like, yeah. That's just how it is. Yeah, you can't be tripping. Yeah. I ain't never tripping about how somebody, what somebody think about something. Forget so it, I'm cool. So everybody going to have their opinion. That's no, just for what sure. it is, but that's what they send the music in for, yeah. the unbiased opinion. For sure. For now, how do you tell someone their music trash without saying it's trash? I felt like whenever somebody say, man, that be hard, dang, that means, like, that, that's the number one I, thing, that be hard, cuz. Mm-mm, that's not it. Yeah. Mm-mm. mm Because I, just, you know, if we start raising our hands on live, if you know, you know, it's yeah. just not it, turn it off. Man. Because a real DJ don't know, like, within the first 20, 30 seconds of the song, if it's a hit. Mm-hmm. Normally, like if you mix and you only playing up to a minute of the song, maybe yeah. a minute and a half if you really mix it in and out. So, you know. For sure. Heck yeah. Now, doing these reviews, have you ever heard someone that you felt like, damn, they should for sure be bigger than what they are in the city? Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'd have heard of some fire. Yeah. Somebody, they, I got a whole playlist of songs that I didn't got in the email mm-hmm. on my computer. Right yeah. now, it's like, oh, fire. Yeah. Some of them ain't mixing master, but it's like you get where they going. Yeah, they just need that push. Yeah. Because I ain't heard some people, like, I had some uh, some people came on the show, I'm like, dog, why? Like, they should be, definitely be bigger than what they are. You feel me? But like you, like we said, it's all about who you know and who know you. Yeah. So, you yeah, know what I'm saying? It's all about finding your audience. Yeah. yeah so, you got to find who want to hear you. Yeah. Cause it took me a while, like, to even start listening to Detroit rappers. It took me to do his podcast. I ain't gonna lie. Before I did his podcast, I didn't pay attention to Detroit rap. I thought it was all trash until I got, until I, until I really started listening to it for real. Like, oh, these dudes ain't bad. Like, you feel me? Like, first time I listened to Peasy was two years ago. Straight up, like, for, I was like, I think the only person that I kind of like, the only person I was on and I felt like he he been cold since he started was uh Payroll. I feel like Payroll is the hardest rapper in That's Detroit. That's my twin favorite rapper. Yeah, Payroll is the, <laughs> is the hardest rapper in Detroit to me. You feel me? Shout out to Payroll. Hey, cuz you ever want to come on the show, man, it's open. You know what I'm saying? But, <laughs> yeah. Shout out Payroll. Payroll is the hardest rapper. And he just, like I say, he just keep it he keep it player. Like, he don't be all in the mix. He don't be, you know what I'm saying? He don't do too much. He just drop good music. And he going to give you at least two bio works each year. You feel me? Vezo. Yeah. Vezo been working so long, I thought he was about 40. <laughs> like, I didn't even know he was in his early 30s. You know what I'm saying? But, yeah, he been working for a long time. Shout out your wheel. Yeah. But yeah, it took it took me to do his podcast to really really tap in and to Detroit music. I'm like, how am I have people who rap from the city come on the show if I don't listen to it? You feel me? So I had to start listening to it and I'm like, dang, it's like it's some real hard people out here. Is there anybody in general that you feel like that's just that's just cold with it but people might not really know right now? Yeah, my artist big day. Yeah. I feel like he got it just like I feel like Jug had it way back in twenty 20- 13, 14, 12, back in then, I thought, bro, it was her code, so, so mm-hmm. you know. Nah. Yeah, but they, he ain't got the audience yet. Mm-hmm. We building that up, but bro, it's, he really, I feel like he could be a big artist, bro. Yeah, for, for sure. Really. Yeah, you going to have to send me his uh, his, his information so I can go ahead and yeah. tap in with, 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 uh. Get him on the show. Yeah, for sure, for tap sure. Tap in with, bro. Now, what about, um. The ladies. I ask this question a question a lot. Like we don't mm-hmm. see ladies working with each other a lot. Every time we see collabs, it's ladies with dudes. It's never like, you know, what I'm saying. How you feel about the Detroit scene with with, with female rap? Like, can a, can a girl not show ass and still be a good rapper in the city? I don't know. 
<laughs> I mean, I don't think that is a requirement, but I mean, the ones that's really good, I feel like they do. So. Yeah. So it's like, it's like, so what you what you feel about the collaborating, like working, like why you think it's not a lot of women that work together, like even with the dudes, like we talk about like, payroll and them, they work together. Well, it's less women in the industry mm. for one, so it's like. Rare to run into another woman that's doing something mm-hmm. along the lines of what you're doing. Yeah. But it's like you know who you know. Yeah. But I don't think that it's necessarily harder. Mm-hmm. I just think that collabing with women is just... I don't know, but yeah. I just feel like it's not hard to collab with other females, but... Yeah. It's just this rare because they it's not really a lot of them yeah. around. Yeah, yeah. Now, would you work with some person like on the, on the DJ and tip on the production too? Like, would you like? All right, bet. Like you said. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Shout out Don Beats. Mm-hmm. We're oh. supposed to link up eventually sometime. Yeah, we have supposed to link up on the show too, Don Beats. I don't know what happened. I don't work with uh Mo Better, <laughs> DJ Mo Better. Oh yeah, for sure. Her. Yeah, she hard. That's my dog. Yeah. Yeah, like yeah, I know a few of the women in the industry two mm-hmm. times. Oh yeah, yeah. But, for I sure, just, yeah. T, yeah, she was on the show. Yeah, shout out to T two times. It's like everybody in their own lane, though. So yeah. it's like That's what it is. more That's... men everywhere. So For sure, no. Nah. More likely to work with dudes. Than yeah. Hey, yeah, we need a, a unity dra- a track. <laughs> 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 you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but I, I do be wondering that though. Can a can a girl just come like as herself and not be you know what I'm saying? And her music not be sex driven or revealing too much and still be respected as a as a as a you know what I'm saying MC. You feel me? Because, you know, I think a lot of women do believe, like, when they get on their mic, they got to not only sell what they saying, but sell their looks, too. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because I guess that's probably to get the the attention from dudes, because, you know, but at the end of the day, I don't know. It just, me neither, bro. Just rap. Like, just, <laughs> <laughs> just rap, for real, for real. Now, is it something that you hate that you got to deal with when it comes to this whole music industry? Uh, something I hate. Mm-hmm. That you gotta deal deal with maybe personally or just what you see from the outside looking in. I don't know. I don't really hate nothing. I just take life for what it is for real. Yeah. And it's like as long as you're not pay- playing with my money, mm-hmm. <laughs> they <laughs> we ain't really got no issues. It's not really nothing for me to hate on. Yeah. Have you had that situation though? Like somebody playing with your money when you was like DJing the gig or somewhere? Mm. You could say that. Try to get over or something real quick. Tried to, but it ain't work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine, oh, no, I can get over a little bit. Pay, <laughs> Tried to, Take a little work. bit off the top or whatever. It ain't work. Man. But, you know. Now, I got this one thing. I said I wasn't going to cuss, but we do got Mama uh, Mama Murray in the mm-hmm. building or whatever. So, I got this one junk called Young Nigga Shit versus Some Shit I've Been Through. Mm-hmm. This means something that you don't believe in now that you believed in when you was a young, a young you know what I'm saying, like 18 or whatever. Something that I believe now that I didn't believe back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Something that you don't agree with. You know what I'm saying? The, however old you are now, something that you don't agree with your younger self. Like at 18, I felt like this. But I look back at that and like, what the heck was I thinking? Hmm. Little, getting something a little deep back. I, I don't know. You know what I'm saying? It could, be, it could be life. It could be with this music stuff. So, Whatever it is, you believe you believe that at 18, but now you look at yourself like, man, what the hell was I thinking? Well, at 18, I just thought I knew what was going to be next for real. Yeah. Until I got that rude awakening with my pops. And it's just like, from there, it's like you never know mm-hmm. what is going to happen yeah. next for real. Because yeah. at 18, I lost my pops. Like, yeah. I just turned 18. It was a week after my graduation. Yeah. So you never know what's going to be next. Mm-hmm. And that's just, that's what I would, yeah. Yeah. So with that happening, do that make you like think like whatever I, whatever I want to do or however I want to, you know, say I just got to go for it and not waste time or, or second guess things. Because a lot of times we'd be like, oh, we got to tomorrow to do it. But we you need to go ahead and just jump on it right now. What's your podcast? This podcast supposed to came out like years ago. <laughs> <laughs> we been, and I was just bullcrapping. Then one day it just hit me like, you know what? Yeah, like I got jump on it. Hooping for real. Yeah. Getting back to, just getting back to my roots for real. Like yeah. starting over. For sure. 
Yeah, well, you but definitely got to like being in the same lane though. Cause yeah, cause some people get too com- some people get comfortable. Yeah, way too comfortable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like when you hoop, dog, you definitely invite me. I want to see this. You know what I'm oh, saying? Yeah. I got to flow. Yeah, I got, got, got. To tell you. Hey, yeah, no, I believe you. I believe you. Listen, I believe you for real, I'm for real. I'm putting ankles on trophy cases this year. Man, Watch. now, now making a band. I always ask people this question: like, give me your making a band album of Detroit artists. Like, you working on the beats? You making this one album? Who is the Who is the five people that's gonna be on this album? Making a band. This is like any five. Any five from the city. This is your your one opportunity to work with these people, and you want them all on the album. Sada. Okay. Skiller. All right. Jug. All right. Baby Money. Okay. And Big Day. Okay, that's your that's your album. That's my five. Okay, okay. Now, what if you had to do five, like like industry uh, artists? Fire industry artists. Yeah, but, but it's still okay, your production. Well, what's the what's the vibe though? Is we doing R and B or are we talking like my hardest rap song in the industry? Let's do let's do R and B. R and B. I know you're Michael Jackson head. Oh yeah. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Uh, me too. Sure. I used to get good pork cards for them for Listen, them CDs. For sure. <laughs> hey, look, he's the goat. Like, yeah. That's him. Ain't no doubt about it. That's the original him. Yeah, but I love R and B. I I listen R and B more than rap. So yeah, let's talk R and B. Okay, so. Current current R and B, I would say, Summer Walker. Okay. Scissor. All right. Queen Naja. Okay. She from shout out to uh she from Ipsy, right? Ah, uh, don't give me a line. <laughs> <laughs> she's from Ipsy. Shout that new Summer Walker EP hard too. Yeah. yeah you can tell she be more everybody. I told you, listen, uh, she was in her bag. No, for three. sure. Hell yeah. Uh, give me this hard. Give me. R.A. Lennox. All right. And Erica Badu. All right, you got your nice little what's You know your music a little bit. Like, it's yeah. going to be a vibe. No, for sure. For yeah. sure. Yeah, some rock of hard, dog. That new yeah. EP, I've been telling my wife to listen to that jump for, forever. She, she, she been hard. Yeah. Since she started. For no, me. for sure. For sure. Like, yeah. Session 32 got me, and that came out back some years ago. Yeah. Anything you'll do differently with your start as far as, like, you know what I'm saying? Music or anything you would change up the way you started this? No, because I'm here. Yeah. And I'm still alive, so <laughs> like I ain't doing too much wrong. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Now, what's your advice to someone who, who want to get, you know what I'm saying, start something new as far as in the music game? If it's making beats, if it's rapping, singing, DJing, like, what's your advice to that person? Mm, don't expect money when you first get into it. Do it because mm. you want to do it. Yeah. And the money going to come. For sure. Because when you first start DJing, you're not get going to get paid. Yeah. <laughs> you're not going to get paid 200 yeah. an hour. It's yeah. just not, it's not, you know, what's happening when you a brand new DJ. You don't really know what you're doing. You don't know what crowd control is. You don't know how to sway people mm-hmm. back and forth, you know. But, yeah, that's what I would. No, that's important because everybody think. Shit, we thought that we would have been quit. Like, <laughs> that's the first thing people think is like, all right, I'm getting money. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, the money gonna come with it, and it just don't happen like that, man. You know what I'm saying? If you're doing it for that, then you might just go ahead and stop. Look, for real, the money gonna come if you're really, really doing it and you consistent and persistent. The money is gonna come. Like when sure. I first started DJing, like I told you, I was just in the dorms. I was, I wasn't really. Then I started getting in and out of DJing and, and with the frats and the sororities and the, all of that and you know they have a lot of events on campus too and then yeah. black student unions and For sure. all the the campus government and all that yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah now this this is your chance to talk your stuff but like when at one point did you feel like oh yeah i'm the shit like i ain't never felt like that oh come on now you never I feel ain't... like you was that 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 person because i i feel like that off episode 10, like, oh, yeah, heck, you know, nobody. No, ain't I no just, other podcast in the city. I just feel like I'm me. Like, I yeah. don't really, compared to what? Like, I'm compared to what? See, my got a problem. That's why I say, <laughs> that's why I named it. See, people think when I, they, <laughs> people think the Shaw versus everybody is a, is a playoff Detroit versus everybody. Right. It was Shaw versus everybody when I was doing music, and now because I always feel like it right. was me. Just me. Like, everything I did, even when I coach, I don't have an assistant coach. It's me. Uh-huh. I want to beat you by myself. I want to look over there and see that your assistant, your trainer, everybody over there, and I beat you with this podcast. I mean, of course, I got top producer in the world, but you know what I'm saying? I, it's me. So I, I, I take everything as a challenge. 
And it might be an issue I got with myself. But even when I was a dad, I was a dad at 19, 20. All right, bet. Y'all can't, I can't do it. All right, I'm going to prove a point. Everything I do, I, I just, I'm just crazy. Like, <laughs> like, I just feel like it's a point already, to be proven, even when it's not a point to be proven. I don't really, I don't got no points to prove, man. I yeah. just do what I love, bro. Yeah. That's DJing, and you know, I love DJing and I mm. love making beats. Yeah. And I done figured out a way to get paid off of it. You know? yeah. Nah, I just, you know. See, I'm gonna be like, yo, what's You ever watch, um, what was that show? Uh, dang, dang. I forgot the show, but they had like, uh, Barack Obama they had like mm -hmm. what he was saying, then they had that person on the side of him saying what they really want to say. Can't yeah, can't feel, yeah. <laughs> so I'm gonna be that person on the side of you talking junk, like, yeah, you know, I'm just I love everybody. <laughs> I'm gonna be on the side of you just talking shit to everybody. <laughs> Cause like I even take stuff personal. Like I'll be kind of telling him when I see like Detroit Rap Daily or mm -hmm. uh, what's that, V Live, whatever, or v Detroit Rap News. Keys. Yeah, I'm like, damn, I sure don't see mine. My podcast. All right, bet. I got it. I got some for y'all. Mm. I tell you, but it's just it's not hate it's not being mad at these people mm -hmm. it's just be like alright bet like I take everything as a challenge you know what I'm saying so every, all these other podcasts I be like bet I write my little notes I feel like they gonna come too though but a yeah. lot of people be paying for what they get posted not for sure. on there like, not for sure a lot sure. of them posts be paid folks yeah yeah and that's it like don't I even said, necessarily it, be an organic relationship mm -hmm. or a relationship at all they yeah. just gave him some money and he put it on his page and, for, and that don't sound like a win to, for me like like, like I said, people said like, oh, I, I invited certain artists on here that was had a name, and like, oh, you gotta pay me five hundred. I get you on a show, everybody gonna have, they gonna like it, but it's gonna feel like a loss to me because I ain't paid you five hundred dollars, and I gotta come up with questions like, so I lost. <laughs> 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 it's not gonna get show man come out here and give me no podcast deal, nah. like, you know what I'm saying? So everybody looking like, oh, you doing your thing, but in my mind, no, I'm not. Like, cause if I ain't giving this five hundred dollars, he would not be sitting right next to me. Man, you feel nah. me? So yeah, man. Shout out to the people that pay for stuff. I just, I'm, I might be too cheap to do anything. I just, I want to win a different way. I want to be like, dang, I got on this or I got on that through you just them to pay working. You to come on the show for sure. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Pay me to come to your event. Like, yeah, Rashad, can you please walk through? Like, all right, bet I got you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's how you gotta do it. Now, we got a couple of things that we end this stuff off with. I do this right. thing called top three. Okay. I give you a category, whatever. You give me your top three. Give me your top three. Rappers ever. Rappers? Yep. Ever. Yep. Can I be biased or unbiased? Both. You can do a top three bias and a top three unbiased. Okay, a top three bias. Jug Big Day. <laughs> got you. And and J. Cole. Okay. Yeah, you okay. You, you got some with J. Cole. You good. Okay. Top top three unbiased. I'm gonna say J. Cole. Mm. I don't want to mess this up. <laughs> it's good because you're going to switch up every day. J. Cole. Yeah. Let me start over because this is not a no order. Let me be clear. For sure. Lil Wayne. Oh, yeah, he my top three for sure. J. Cole. And. That last spot always get hard. I don't know, bro. You ain't go wrong with Lil Wayne or J. Cole. Yeah, I was just, can I leave it at two? Yeah, for sure. Two? Go ahead. Yeah, 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 yeah. Lil Wayne and J. Cole. All right, give me your top three childhood crushes. Not Tyrone, celebrity. Top three? <laughs> yeah. Usher. Okay. Um. <laughs> Usher. Uh, B5. <laughs> And uh, I remember B5. <laughs> B5 and uh, not all of them though. Yeah, I don't remember. What was the little lady's second name? Uh, Patrick or something? I don't know. Don't, don't ask me how I know. I just, <laughs> <laughs> I just be knowing one of them. Man. And uh, dang, we gonna do yours top two. Who was on my wall? <laughs> I had somebody else on my wall. He wasn't no crush. Yeah. <laughs> Ew. The old Michael Jackson. Oh, Nah, he wasn't no crush. I said, Delay's love the old Michael Jackson before he did the whole, you know, thing he nah, did. Nah, 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 that's my idol. That yeah. ain't my crush. All right. Nah. So the, the dude from B5. It was Omarion was on my wall. Omari, okay, okay, okay. People <laughs> be sleep, people be acting like they ain't used to like Omarion. They be giving him all type of flag. Like, he was the B2B2K. I had B2K on the wall. Yeah, for sure. That's why I say it, it had to be rough being Raz B. Like, 
Because all ladies always announced they like Omarion, uh, J Bug, Fizz, but nobody never said Raz B. You know how mad I be? <laughs> hey, I'm not with nobody war, not mentioned with, you know what I'm saying? Give me, your, <laughs> give me your top three moments in life. My top three moments in life. A little deep. Huh. Graduating high school. Okay. Um. Dang. I don't, that's I don't know. <laughs> it could be a, a gig. Uh, oh, I DJ. Um, uh, the first time I DJed at the Kalamazoo State Theater. Mm -hmm. That's like the Fox here, mm -hmm. but on the west side of the state. Okay. And. I don't know. That's your for show top two. DJing for good. <laughs> All right, bet. One of good. his shows, bro. He, they right. always turn. That's Shout good. out to my brother. All right, give me your uh, top three foods. Mexican food. Okay. Chinese food. <laughs> and chicken. <laughs> <laughs> you hear me? Yeah, for sure. <laughs> What you get from the Chinese restaurant, dog? Cause I love, boy, I be sesame chicken. Yeah. With um chicken fried rice, add beans, sprouts. Yeah. Oh, you got the bean sprouts. Beans, you got to add bean sprouts and add shrimp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a special. And I need a brown gravy on the side for my rice. Oh yeah, see, I, 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 just, I just put that soy sauce on there, boy. I don't need the gravy and shit. I don't never. I ain't never did soy sauce. Oh What man. it tastes like? Good. Just. <laughs> I just be loading that boy up with the soy sauce. Like, <laughs> and then the Chinese restaurants give you that big old uh, platter of, uh, of rice, but they give you two packs of sauce. Like, bro, come on, man. Give me five. Like, you can't be doing oh, that. Oh, my egg roll. Don't ever forget that. Egg roll. Man, look. Yeah, I be throwing that in the garbage. <laughs> no. <laughs> so I say egg roll. Just Hand it here next yeah. time, bro. <laughs> <laughs> give me your top three hoopers. LeBron, Kobe, Jordan. Okay. Big bomb. Yeah, 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 that's a good one. That's a good Easy. one. Yeah, that's a good one. My, my is a uh, is a uh, Kobe, uh, Mike, and it's crazy, dog. My top three is Melo. Yeah, huh? yeah. Carmelo is my is my one of my favorite hoopers ever. Bro, yeah. Because let me Over tell you something. LeBron? Like it's just personal. What I, do you mean? Like, now, if you tell me who who is better, of course LeBron is better. So like, what do you mean? How do I just you, like, you just I just like him better. You just said that you just. I like bro. The, no, those are bro. three people. That mm -hmm. no matter what team they play, well, Jordan and um, Kobe didn't play for another team. I mean, Jordan with the Wizards. But no matter what time they play, who they play, where they play, I had to watch those three. Melo, when he played for Portland, I remember like the last time I had to watch it. Like, I just, I'm a Melo fan. You know what I'm saying? But see, I got. Team Brian. I, I like people like, I like people that's not like real, like real good. It'd be like, okay. Like, Melo is, is better than okay. But I just like people like, like Rondo. Like, you know what I'm saying? Gerald Green. People don't know who Gerald Green is for real. Like, <laughs> like, <laughs> like when I like I like I like Hooper, like I just be watching, like, you know what I'm saying? Certain people I like to watch, you know what I'm saying? Give me you watch uh women's basketball? Not really. See, I never understood that. How can you be a hooper and don't even like a lot of my girls who play basketball don't know nothing about girls basketball. And I'm like come on now. Especially now. I the, watch LeBron. <laughs> the girls now is starting to is starting to like really ball. Like old girl who be rapping and balling, uh, Fly J. Oh was, yeah, she. I, I, I watch uh, the college. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. College basketball is a little bit better than um. But WNBA. I don't watch WNBA respectfully. I haven't. I just haven't. No, no mm. love. All love to the WNBA. Yeah. Now <laughs> I just haven't. I used to say I can give certain NBA players work until I had saw the bummiest NBA player and how how swole this dude was. Like dog, mm -hmm. dog. I can't. I wouldn't be able to give him no work. Do you feel like you can give a WNBA player some work? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right? I don't back down from no yeah. challenge. Yeah, yeah. Man, when I saw my team Cleves, I'm like, this dude earns like three of mine. Like, <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> I ain't got no chance of playing against him, dog. I can hope. Man, look. Mm-mm, mm-mm, mm-mm. Okay, right. I don't know about no big, strong man like that. <laughs> I, I, yeah. Oh, shoot. Now, do uh when you play basketball like heavy like was, cause I learned my lesson one time I was playing against a girl and I was like trying to play like a girl until she hit like the first two or three threes like all right bet that's how they always that, do but I learned that's my lesson at a young age with me. I was like in 
seventh grade. And every since then, I say I don't care if it's my grandma out there. I'm playing. I'm playing hard. Like I'm not showing no. I'm not showing no love, what? no mercy. You not, bro. You not being down, grandma. Yes, bro. I got you to. Not... I got bro, to. Bro, what? Because I remember I was playing. You, you at... slapping it? Yes. I'm. I'm beating up no. the glass. Because I played the YMCA. I never forget her name was Jasmine. And she played for her. Uh, she was the only girl who played in the league because her dad yeah. was a coach, and his dad, her dad, team was stacked. Like they had the best. Call they 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 team. They was Henderson, Henderson Ballers, and they had a squad. And Jazz was on the on the squad, and she got in. I'm like, man, I gotta check her. And I bad up, <laughs> and she hit three threes. I'm like, ha ha ha. I'm like, ever since I learned my lesson, ever since then, oh, I'm on you. Look, man, look, 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 look. I'm like, That's I'm... always how it goes yeah. though. When I ever, whenever I go hoop, and it's dudes, which is majority of the time, mm -hmm. they always don't want to play defense until I done hit two or three threes in a row. Yeah, it's like you leave me open, bro. I'm finna to light you up. What you mean? <laughs> oh, you, so you finna... you're, a, you're a shooter, or you got the handles, or you got a little combination. Both. Okay, okay, I got okay. All that. I got it? ankles on trophy <laughs> cases. I told you. Oh, so they don't want no smoke with me. Yeah, see, I got an old man game. Like, I'll be jabbing. Oh, no. <laughs> Up faking. Like, that's what I'm telling you. Like, Melo, that's why he was my guy. He played like, oh, that's how I be. You know what I'm saying? I'll be too lazy for that. Like, I had to play against my high school kids the other day. I went to a hole about a good three times strong. Finish. <laughs> day, I know. I'm like, hey, sir. Like, it was a wrap. Like, like, I used to be able to do this all day. Like, he was, he, I was like, ha, ha. I got a little cup. Because I be telling people, you don't have to dribble the ball to get past somebody. Like, uh, like constantly. Like, I tell my son, if you dribble the ball four or five times and you still ain't with nowhere, reset. Pass it out. <laughs> like, me, I can. I, I, it took me three or four dribbles. I, I'm past you. You know what I'm saying? I did it. I'm like, oh, shoot. I still got it. No, nah, my chest hurt. I'm cool. I'm cool. <laughs> Shout out to those people who can hoop still at, at, at you know what I'm saying, past 30. <laughs> oh, no. But uh, like I said before, when we was off camera, we ain't everything with a drunk moment or a high moment. A funny story when you was drunk, high, or on cocaine. Oh, no. <laughs> That's deep. Yeah. I ain't, I ain't never been on that. But, uh, <laughs> Give me a funny story when you were drunk or, 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 or high. Um... Well, I was with one of my best friends, Angel, and we went downtown. Yeah. And we ended up at Bell Isle, and she bought Jose Cuervo. Yeah, Jose Cuervo. Hold on. Y'all, so y'all, hold on. Y'all went, how y'all go from going downtown to end up in Bell Isle? I mean, it ain't that far, but like, what changed up? I don't know. We ended up at Bell Isle. <laughs> That's dangerous to be And our drunk. friend was um there, too. Mm-hmm. And we met with our friend. He yeah. was just at Bell Isle. And I remember I broke my glasses. Yeah, some cards. That's all I remember, yes. Yeah. R.I.P. Man, so <laughs> Moment of silence. No, so you, so when you, when you, the next day you didn't know, like, why glasses broke, high glasses broke? No, I remember vividly how they broke, but it was, that was just a drunk moment. That's yeah. what happened. So what was the point y'all going out? Like, what was, it, like, was it just we the end of Bell Isle? <laughs> <laughs> it was just, no. it was like, you want to go downtown? Okay. okay. All right, do you want to go to Bell Isle? What do that day? Man, no. Nah. just ended up at Bell Isle. See, I went downtown. I ended up... But our friend not from Detroit, so he was trying to, like, Yo, to see show him around. where Bell Isle was. So. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, being drunk and going to Bell Isle, they ain't, ain't, uh, I'll be kind of scared of work right there. Like, no, I'm good. Yeah, I'm not a drinker, so I ended up sick the next day. Yeah, but see, everybody like that. Everybody who, sm who smoke, don't drink. Everybody who drink, don't smoke. Right. Because like I, I I can't smoke. I'm not I'm not a drinker necessarily. I just whenever people get around, I drink with them. I won't call my. I'm not the person who could just be at the crib and and just like I gotta have a drink. Like I can't do that. All right. But it, it, whenever I try to smoke, my brother shout out to the classic pothead. Can't <laughs> can't do it. Can't do it. Cause I be man, like I said, I be I thinking. Can't, uh, liquor ain't for me, man. Yeah. It just ain't. No, it ain't for anybody. Not for me. I I prefer my weed. And that's it. Yeah. Uh, I ain't do no living. How was you when you were comfortable enough to tell your mom that you smoke and smoke around her? Because it took my... I don't know. <laughs> were you a little nervous or scared to say it? No, I don't, just don't remember. Yeah. <laughs> what was that? 20-something. Yeah. 20-something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm still 20-something, though. <laughs> Thank you, dog. But no, I appreciate you coming on the show. Song. You know what I'm saying? Tell everybody where they can find you at. You know what I'm saying? You can find me on Instagram at Cali underscore C R Z Y. Mm. You can find me on Twitch at Cali Got Game 23. Okay. And that's it. Are you crazy? No. Okay. Just, it just it went with the Cali crazy? Yeah. It just rolled <laughs> off the tongue when I created the account way back in 20. 
13 or something like that. I don't know. For sure, for sure. Yeah, man, you already know, man. Shaw versus everybody, best podcast in the city. Ain't no competition. If it is, I don't see it. Uh, episode 164, <laughs> DJ Kelly Crazy, you know what I'm saying? She ain't broke some heart. She ain't want to talk about that, but we talked about a whole bunch of stuff. I ain't break no heart. <laughs> if I broke your heart, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. If she got her heart broke, she ain't going to say it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know if that ever happened. <laughs> All right, man. Shaw versus everybody, man. You know what it is, man. Peace.